Well, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, making your big single page app like load fast. So I'm not going to talk about like JavaScript performance or things like that, but just the performance of how your app loads. And um, I've done this talk before, but then on a full stack conference. So there I called it making your web framework titans feel tiny. And uh, because we're now on an Ember conference, this is the Ember edition. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll skip over this slide uh, because Jamie already introduced me. Uh, but you can find me on Twitter on that handle. Uh, oops, I work for Dockyard uh, where we love Ember. Let's talk about single page apps and uh, how to load them quickly. So your typical single page app uh, HTML structure looks a bit like this with a lot of stuff left out, but basically you have an HTML document. Uh, in your head is a link with your style sheet and in the body you have a script tag that loads your JavaScript file. And um, uh, loading wise, uh, that looks a bit like this. So from zero on your HTML starts to load from the service, server. And then uh, when that's done and parsed, then it will find your link to the CSS uh, file in your script tag for your JavaScript. So that will start to load. And then when your JavaScript is done, then you probably need some data from your API server. So it will load JSON. And then maybe your JSON contained like, uh, uh, like a profile and it has an image. So it will load images. And uh, that's in a nutshell how your page is loaded. And um, so what, uh, so we want to know how fast that is uh, loaded. And uh, for that, I use uh, webpagetest.org. Uh, it's a uh, tool that like runs your website in a VM or on actual devices. And it will give you like a, uh, it will do three runs of loading your website, first render, uh, reload, everything, and give you like all of the stats you want uh, to see how fast your page loads. And it includes like your Lighthouse report if you test it on mobile, on Chrome, uh, and uh, it will give you tips on how to improve. So yeah, I, I recommend like everybody that hasn't done it yet, run webpagetest.org on your uh, app and uh, see what happens and what advice it gives you. Um, at Dockyard, we build Ember apps. We build multiple Ember apps. And um, looking through a few of them, I found out that like most of them range between like 500 kilobyte and one megabyte of assets. So that's not only just JavaScript, but also like the CSS, the HTML, the fonts, and, and all that things. And it's distributed a bit like this. So you have like your uh, CSS being 30 kilobytes and images maybe 100 kilobytes. Then it will download 10 kilobytes of JSON for your data and uh, maybe uh, your design team like wanted you to use fancy fonts. So there's also another 50 kilobytes of uh, font files. But then there's like the big whopper of uh, JS being 500 kilobytes and uh, yeah, it pretty much eats up the rest of it. So um, yeah, uh, JS is the big thing uh, of single page apps. Like most of it is just JavaScript. Um, so again, uh, what does that mean in terms of real world? So uh, for example, a typical app and typical Ember app will take like two to three seconds to load on the desktop. And when you come back to it, it probably be uh, in a blink of an eye, like half a second to a second and a half uh, to appear on screen fully loaded. Um, but on mobile, it might be a little bit slower. So two to five seconds or when you first visit it, then when you come back, it, it, it might be between half a second and three seconds to load it. 
but that's actually pretty much the optimistic scenario. More realistically, it's like between five and eight seconds, and um, when you come back to the four, but that's even the, a good case on a realistic mobile device because you can have bad connection and it will be even slower and then you might have like a terrible old phone and then you get in the realm of 15 to 25 seconds for it to first load and then we are way, way past like the three second uh, uh, mark of uh, optimal loading time. So we want to optimize for this scenario because we want everybody, even with the most crappy phone in, I don't know, Thailand to be able to uh, uh, load our website. And um, to uh, maybe we can't like make it like really fast, but uh, uh, one trick is uh, to actually not make it faster, but like make it up here faster. So, uh, Right now, if you load an Ember app, uh, you might have seen it that like it's first like it's a blank screen and then something will appear later uh, when your JavaScript has been loaded. And uh, uh, what I'm going to explain now is a lot of tricks to like, instead of like making it really faster, we're going to make the first thing to appear on the screen make make that faster. So, and the term that is is either first frame or first meaningful paint. And um, on the loading timeline, uh, default Ember app will have that first frame around over there. There it will start, start to render. So that's when your JavaScript is done loading. And uh, yeah, I, to demonstrate this, I created a demo app and uh, it's a single page uh, Ember app that does pretty much nothing but demonstrate my point. So um, when you're on a bad phone connection and, and, and uh, have a terrible phone, then uh, loading even such a simple app will pretty much take a long time. So if I now start this, then you'll see it load. Now it has the index.html because you can see the title and then uh, it takes a while for it to load because it's on five times slowdown and probably like 400 or a really bad 2G connection. And I can just keep on talking and there it is. So that took about 20 seconds to appear. So that's way too long. Probably I'll probably have hit the back button already because it doesn't load ever. Um, so let's give the user a little bit of confidence that my app will load. So we want to make the first frame go from after the JavaScript to be after your uh, HTML page because that's the first moment your uh, browser can actually show something uh, uh, anyway. Um, so we're going to use a technique that uh, the Google people call App Shell. And uh, the first thing we want to do in an app shell is uh, include some static HTML in our index page. So uh, one way to do it is using fastboot, and then uh, you're uh, done pretty quickly. Uh, but if you don't use fastboot, you can include a little bit of static uh, HTML in your index.html uh, file. Uh, if you do this uh, with an Ember app, you need to add like the uh, Ember view class to the uh, first div in your body, and then uh, take an initializer from Ember seal of Fastboot to like wipe the content and then let Ember render it. Otherwise, uh, Ember will just append its view, and uh, you'll have two uh, menu bars or whatever you put in your static content. Um, so we've added an app shell to show the user something. And if we now look at this, then instead of like taking 20 seconds, we already have something on the screen. And this will give our user hope that someday ever <laughs> something will appear. Uh, I'm not going to wait for this. I'm just interested in the before and after a little bit. Uh, oh. 
does this one? I don't know. Oh yeah, there it is. So yeah, much faster. And um, but uh, we wanted to go to after the HTML, but actually we're halfway there. We're actually now after CSS because uh, CSS blocks rendering normally. So it waits for the CSS file to finish downloading and then um, uh, will render your first paint or your first frame. Uh, so we need to add another trick. And uh, so part two of our app shell is uh, inlining a few styles for our static page. And um, so we add a style tag to our head with like the body styles and nav styles or the main style and the footer style. And um, we changed our style tag to link rel preload instead of uh, uh, rel style sheet. And um, here's it a little bit more clear without all the extra things. Uh, this is a new API. Uh, what it will do is tell the browser, go download this file because I will use it later. Uh, hence the rel preload. And you can uh, tell it what kind of file you're preloading so it uh, knows what you intend to do with it later. Uh, this is new API, so here's a can I use it com page that tells you like uh, uh, Chrome impl implements it and because Chrome implements it, Opera does it and you can use it on the Android browser. Um, and this is nearly 50% of all the browsers uh, uses. So um, yeah, a lot of uh, users already can benefit from this technique. But if you want uh, the other 50% to also get a, uh, uh, still be able to see your style sheet, you need to add a polyfill for this. And that's uh, load CSS. Uh, and um, so now we're even a little bit faster. So the after will show up like a uh, eye blink or blink of an eye faster than before. So after is a little bit faster and then uh, it will still take a while for everything else to load. So now we've gone from after CSS to after HTML, which was our goal. And, um, uh, but there's not only the first load of your page, there's also when people come back to your page. Uh, so returning visitors, and um, a returning visit is already just loads faster. I'm still in the same settings, but now it actually like it may be three seconds. Uh, it, and um, it looks very fast, but actually we regressed a little on the first meaningful paint. And I'll, uh, I have a comparison slide. So uh, left. Uh, is the first load when uh, you do the full page load without cache and return visit is the return visit. And uh, you'll see that the return visit is slightly so slower in uh, showing the, its first meaningful pain. So, uh, but, so what happened? Well, let's go back to our timeline. So first of all, this is like the first visit, but uh, coming back, uh, it, more looks like this, so your indexed HTML loads and your uh, CSS and JS is already cached, so it doesn't take long at all, and then your JSON is still requested from the server, and then your images are also cached, if you set your caching headers right, of course. Um, so you would think that your first frame is over there after your indexed HTML, but it's more of a little bit uh, over there, so what's happening? Well, um, your JavaScript is now being evaluated uh, 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 immediately when your index.html has been parsed. So uh, that apparently blocks the first paint. So we need another trick in our book, uh, from our book, uh, to uh, make it go back to after, after index.html. So we had this preload for our style sheet uh, and uh, in the body we still have our script tag. 
Uh, we're going to make it a little bit more advanced. We're also going to add a preload for our script tag. And then uh, instead of like immediately adding the tag and let it load, we are going to load it after the load event, giving the uh, browser a chance to first uh, render something and then uh, uh, showing uh, or and, and then loading the uh, JavaScript, which will unblock uh, uh, the first pane. So uh, here's the before and after again. So now it's even faster uh, than the uh, uh, previous example. And uh, we've gone from our uh, halfway somewhere in the middle of nowhere to after index.html. Now, uh, as you might have noticed, the index.html bar is still um, quite uh, long. Uh, and that's because uh, your browser will still ask your server, hey, is index.html fresh? And then your server will say, yeah, it's fresh. You can still use it. Or if it's not fresh, then, well, you can. Uh, it needs to fetch it again. Uh, one solution to it, this is adding a caching header that says, like, it will be fresh for another year. But uh, this is a big foot gun if you ever intend to actually change your index.html in the coming year. So do not do this. Uh, uh, we've got a better way for this, and that's uh, a service worker. Uh, so uh, I'll just repeat what Robert and uh, Matthew s said this morning. Install Ember Service Worker and maybe a few other plugins of Ember Service Worker. It will only take you 20 minutes to do it, and uh, you'll have fast loading websites uh, uh, when people return visit. Or, yeah. So. Um, Again, before and after, uh, it will be, again, faster, no big surprise. Uh, by now, it's quite like it's almost unnoticeably fast, but we'll take any faster we can get. Um, so now we still have, uh, uh, so now our index.html also shrinked uh, to like being really fast. But now we still have our JSON that takes quite a while to like, show up. So that will block uh, uh, actual, your actual data showing up on your screen. And we can make that a little bit faster when people return, because we already have loaded the data once. Uh, so one way to store it is using your service worker. But I actually do not recommend storing data with your service worker, because uh, you can only like return it, but then not like have a second uh, uh, actual HP request going, and then update the, the response uh, when you got it. So you need to in the Amber app do a lot of stuff. So if you already have to do not a lot of stuff in the Amber app, why not do it all together? So. Uh, we can use local storage. Uh, that's pretty much widely used, uh, widely uh, available uh, API in browsers nowadays. Uh, and um, like, I have an example snippet, but I'm just going to quickly hand wave through it. So you have like uh, a cache response, and it gets like an item from your local storage. Uh, if it has a uh, something cached, then uh, it will uh, read from that and then render it. And then meanwhile, it will uh, fetch the uh, actual data from the back end and uh, get that and then update your cached items uh, when the response returns. And this, this will give you your user a sense of like loading faster because you can first respond immediately with old data and then replace it with the new data later. And uh, a little bit better API for that might be IndexedDB. Uh, it's a little bit newer, but already quite a lot of browsers support it. If you're talking about like only Greenfield browsers, then everyone supports it. I think the cutoff is like somewhere at IE 11. Um, and uh, Again, a code snippet, but it does exactly the same as 
local storage, but it's a little bit more technical and complicated. But uh, yeah, just dig in and uh, find it out. And I one day hope to like probably present like Ember Data supports this out of the box and uh, you'll not have to worry about it, but that's not right now, sadly. So um, yeah, implementing that, we go from uh, a little bit of JSON wait time to no JSON wait time because we'll first serve stale data and then later update it when it's available. And um, that will pretty much, uh, so um, yeah, I have like the uh, return visit baseline and then the, all the steps we took as a comparison and uh, yeah, you'll blink or you miss uh, the last one because uh, it's quite fast <coughs> and uh, the baseline will be slowest and, and so on. So yeah, I couldn't even like turn my head before the uh, last one was finished. Um, and this deserves a uh, cat picture <laughs> looking at an, or walking away from explosion. Um, so, uh, yeah. So now let's talk at something more advanced. So uh, I talked about like the big Pac-Man JavaScript uh, uh, being like the most of our uh, uh, data budget being transferred over uh, the internet. And um, there's sadly not a lot of, uh, a lot we can do about it in an Ember app nowadays, but uh, hopefully in the future. So yeah, on the timeline also like the JS is the longest bar of all of them. And probably this is like not exaggerated enough, probably like uh, the rest of it is probably tiny and JavaScript should be like uh, 10 times as big as the rest at least. But uh, Google a little while ago talked about like a pattern uh, called PRPL, but people tend to uh, pronounce it as purple because it's easier that way. And the letters stand for uh, push, render, precache, and uh, lazy load. And uh, so what they mean with that is uh, you wanna push the minimal uh, uh, assets to render like only that one page. So you don't want to include the router because you don't need it to uh, render that page because you already like maybe have fast boot that can tell you like what needs to be rendered and all the other routes that you don't need right now can also be just skipped out and everything. So pretty much the minimal bundle of JavaScript you need to only render what the person expects to have on his screen. And then when you as fast as possible have loaded the page the person is looking for, you can start about thinking of caching the uh, other modules you need to for, uh, for other pages to uh, be visited. So you can, after you have rendered the page, you can start thinking about loading the router and everything uh, after it. And, and caching it so you can use it again immediately after uh, other visits. And then um, you wanna lazy load just like engines, uh, other modules that aren't like used a lot. Uh, so for example, your admin panel, not every user uses it, so you might as well just lazy load it. And people will uh, expect a little bit of delay going to the admin panel anyway. So that's, that's fine. But as I said, um, we don't have that in Ember right now. Uh, uh, but with Glimmer and everything being separated out and, and a lot of other things, uh, there's like pieces moving towards this, but uh, not today. Um, and um, yeah, I hope uh, we make good progress on this and, and can do it really soon and um, that's all I got.